Hello, I'm Jeannie from MSK Marai. The main complications seen after ACL reconstruction procedures can be broadly divided into two groups based on clinical symptoms, decreased range of motion and laxity. Impingement and arthrofibrosis are the main complications in patients with decreased range of motion. Less common causes include intraarticular bodies and ganglion cysts. Today, let's focus on impingement. Patients with graft impingement may present with loss of range of motion, most commonly full extension, and may be predisposed to graft tearing. We'll first examine two causes of roof impingement, then look at the imaging findings and briefly discuss how to differentiate it from normal graft ligamentization. The primary cause of roof impingement is anterior positioning of the tibial tunnel. Ideally, the tunnel should be located behind Blumensatz line. The white area shows optimal graft placement, while the pink indicates a tibial tunnel position too far anterior. If it's partially or entirely in front of this line, impingement is inevitable, leading to graft pinching. Another way to assess tibial tunnel position is the Amos and Jacob method. The center of the tibial tunnel, based on the widest part of the tibia, should be located about 27% to 60% from the front. Measurements on mid-sagittal MRIs typically show this line at approximately 43% from anterior to posterior. If the tibial tunnel is too far forward, there is an increased risk of intercondylar notch impingement, potentially causing an extension deficit or a cyclops lesion. Additionally, osteophytes at the intercondylar notch level can cause impingement against the graft. On a coronal image at this level, you may see a spur adjacent to the impinged ACL graft, especially well visualized on T1 weighted sequences. Imaging findings for roof impingement include contact between the anterior ACL graft and intercondylar roof, with possible posterior bowing of the graft. Increased signal intensity is seen, especially within the distal two-thirds of the graft. With persistent impingement, the ACL graft may eventually tear. Next, let's look at the case here. This image was taken six months post-surgery. Compared to the previous MRI, the graft is now surrounded by intermediate signal intensity tissue. This patient is exhibiting normal ACL graft ligamentization rather than roof impingement. When increased signal changes are observed in the ACL graft, it's crucial to differentiate impingement from ligamentization. If the surrounding signal is intermediate, typically between 4 to 8 months, and decreases over time, this is likely ligamentization. However, persistent signal changes in areas contacting osteophytes or showing posterior bowing due to impingement, even after a year, suggest roof impingement rather than ligamentization.